Hi, I'm Jimmy Carr, and coming up is a compilation of all the questions and answers from the little tiny quiz of the lockdown over the last week. So you can just sort of sit back and enjoy a not so little quiz of the lockdown. Good luck. First up, five general knowledge questions. So every day, be five general knowledge, and then five, I don't know, fun things? I mean, that suggests general knowledge is not fun. I find pub quizzes fun, and I'm slightly missing them. That's why we're doing this. So, question number one. Where is the one place that the American flag flies all the time, but is never raised or lowered and never saluted? So where is the one place where the American flag flies all the time, but it's never raised or lowered or saluted? Ah, it's a hell of a question. Very satisfying answer when you get it, if you get it. If you don't get it, don't feel bad. We're all locked down. If you don't get it, claim you got it, why not? Question two, what kind of street has a name that's French for the arse of a bag? I mean, this question is only here because I enjoy saying the arse of a bag. What kind of street has a name that's French for the arse of a bag? Ah. Okay, question number three. What are the six weapons used in the original game of Cluedo? Yeah, what are the six weapons used in the original game of Cluedo? Some of them legit weapons, some of them household items that have been used for murder. If you're locked down with your family, I understand you'd be fantasizing about such things, but be nice, be kind to each other, why not? What are the six weapons used in the original game of Cluedo? I guess, I guess you get a point uh, if you get them all. Uh, uh, what do you think, is that fair? You can have a point if you get uh, any three of them, and then an extra point if you get all six. That seems fair, doesn't it? And it's entirely arbitrary, as is this whole thing. Okay, question four. The first four numbers that stay the same written upside down are zero, one, eight, and 11. What's the next one? What is the next number that stays the same written upside down? I mean, ignore serifs and things, but zero, one, eight, 11, they look the same upside down as they do the right way up. What is the next one in that sequence? One for Rachel Riley there. And for question five in our general knowledge round, in a standard pack of playing cards, what are the queens holding in their hands? Ah, oh. okay, in a standard pack of playing cards, what are the queens holding in their hands? You could get this, it's logical, you could work it out. Okay, next up, I've got a picture round. I'm gonna show you five sets of emojis. Each one represents the title of a well-known book. So if I showed you a chain and some air, as here, you would say Jane Eyre, chain air, Jane Eyre, chain air. It's a bit torturous at times, but I think they're fun. Okay, here's question six. Which book is it? You can always press pause if you want to think about it a bit. So what, what book is, is being represented there? Question number seven on your screen now. Okay, so what book is being represented there? Here's question eight. Which book do these emojis represent? I mean, the question is the same for all of these. What book? But you know, I'll keep on restating it because I don't know, that's how quizzes work. Question nine, it's there for you now. What book? And finally, here's question 10. What book is that? Here's our first round of answers. I hope you did well. Our question one was, where is the one place that the American flag flies all the time, but is never raised or lowered and never saluted? Did you get it? The answer was the moon. Do you remember when the, the Americans, they went to the moon? They made a huge fuss about it at the time. They went to the moon and they put a flag there and it flies, it's never lowered, it's never raised, it's never saluted. I mean, perhaps occasionally uh, an American proudly looks up and just tips his hat. So, so maybe on a technicality, but the moon is the answer we were looking for there. The moon. Question two was, what kind of street has the name that's French for the arse of a bag? Huh. Which kind of street has a name that's French for the arse of a bag? It was, of course, cul-de-sac. Quite an easy one, that, really, because how many types of street are there? Once you're through Boulevard and Avenue, you're really out of ideas. 
Lane, can't be Lane, cul-de-sac. Question three. What are the six murder weapons used in the original game of Cluedo? I realize you're locked down with your family, so talking about murder in a house, probably not a good idea. Here we go. Okay, six answers here. Candlestick, dagger, lead piping, revolver, rope, spanner, wrench. You could have said wrench. I mean, you didn't need to say revolver. If you said gun, I will accept it. So that's candlestick, dagger, lead piping, revolver, gun, rope, spanner, or wrench. Uh, okay, so a point if you got three of them, and then a bonus point if you got all six. Well done you. Question four. The first four numbers that stay the same written upside down as the right way up are 0, 1, 8, and 11. What is the next one? Yeah, it's 69. Of course it's 69. It was always going to be 69. I find maths boring, but 69 is funny. There. For question five of the general knowledge round, in a standard pack of playing cards, what are the queens holding in their hands? Did you work it out? It was flowers. Flowers. The Queen's always being handed flowers, so she had flowers in her hands on the, on the playing cards. I mean, I'm not saying she modelled for it, but there's, there's a logic there. Flowers. Okay, now on to the picture uh, round answers. First up, some treasure and an island. I think the island was really doing the heavy lifting there, so the book was Treasure Island. Now we've got war and peace. I mean, how could you not get that? It's War and peace. They're French and they're not looking cheerful. That's it. Le Miserables. I don't think I'm saying that right, am I? I always say Les Mis. Le Miserables? Le, mis le Miserables. Le, le Miserables. Le Miserables. Let's stick with that. Great. Okay, this one the cat. India. You know how no one says India. The cat. India hat. The cat in the hat. I mean, fun. Final one of the day. Win, knee, the poo. Yeah, Winnie the poo. Question one. What caused the permanent closure of the restaurants Palm Court, Cafe Parisian and the Veranda on the 15th of April 1912? What caused the permanent closure of the restaurants Palm Court, Café Parisian and the Veranda on the 15th of April, 1912? I mean, when you get it, it is very satisfying. Question number two in our general knowledge round for Tuesday. What have Western dragons got that Chinese dragons haven't got? I presume you're all thinking coronavirus. Stop it. It's a global problem. What have Western dragons got that Chinese dragons haven't got? Just think about where you've seen them, flags and parades, think, you'll get there. I've got every faith in you. Question three. Which two male actors won Oscars for playing the same part in different films? Which two male actors won Oscars for playing the same part in different films? There are two possible answers Obviously a bonus point if you get both. It's happened twice. Two male actors have won Oscars for playing the same part in different films. It's happened twice in film history. Name the character, name the actors, you get points. Question four. Name the five EU countries with vertical tricolor flags. That, that means they've got three blocks of color next to each other, not on top of each other. So name the five EU countries with tricolor flags. Fun to say, Trickler. Question five. Name the town in Norfolk that as you approach it, disappears. Name the town in Norfolk that as you approach it, disappears. If you are watching this anywhere other than the UK, take this question off and maybe, uh, maybe call an elderly relative and tell them that they are loved and valued. Because you're not gonna get this. It's, it's a very British question. Okay, hope you're doing well. Our next round, uh, I'm gonna show you five journeys. In each of them, the starting point and the end point rhyme. That's right, everyone, rhyming journeys. Yeah, I thought it'd be fun to do journeys because obviously no one's going on any journeys at the moment. 
other than, you know, the government mandated little walk around the park and uh, trip to the shops to buy yet more toilet paper. Okay, you need both uh, the uh, starting point and the destination of the rhyming journey to get one point. You ready? Here's question number six. Where is this journey from? Where is it to? They rhyme. The clue is, they rhyme. Okay, question number seven. And remember, both places on the map rhyme. Question eight. You can press pause, I guess, if you want more time to think about it, or just go back and watch it. Again, you can scroll, it's easy. Okay, so they both rhyme, that's question number eight. And nine, I need the starting point and the destination, they both rhyme. If you've opened up Google Maps as well, who are you letting down here? Only yourself, I'm very disappointed. And here is our final rhyming journey. Okay, so it's from there to there, they rhyme, I mean, Delightfully satisfying if you get them. Question number one. I asked you what caused the permanent closure of the restaurants Palm Court, Cafe Parisien, and the Veranda on the 15th of April, 1912. I think very satisfying if you got this. So I can tell you Palm Court, Cafe Parisien, and the Veranda were closed because the 15th of April, 1912, the Titanic sank and, and the restaurants were on the Titanic and therefore they closed. I mean, what would be more remarkable is if some enterprising restaurateur had decided to stay open. What are the specials? The fish is very fresh. Question two was, uh, what have Western dragons got that Chinese dragons haven't got? We will not accept the answer, coronavirus. The answer is, of course, wings. Yeah, we, we've got wings on our dragons, whereas, whereas the, uh, the, uh, the Eastern dragon, no, 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 not so much. Not having it with a wing. Yeah, fair enough. Question three. I asked you which two male actors won Oscars for playing the same part in different films. Now, this has happened twice in movie history. Firstly, it was Vito Corleone from the Godfather films, and the actors were Marlon Brando and Robert De Niro. But then it happened again this year, it, because Heath Ledger has got uh, an Oscar for playing the Joker, and then Joaquin Phoenix got an Oscar for playing the Joker in The Joker and I think The Dark Knight. Uh, anyway, um, well done everyone, you've all got Oscars. Question four, I asked you to name the five EU countries with vertical tricolor flags. They are Italy, you've got Italy. France, you got France, come on. Belgium, oh. Ireland, of course, and Romania. Yeah, you can check the emojis on your phone if you don't believe me. And you're now thinking, oh, I should have checked the emojis on my phone subtly when I was doing the answers, and then I would have looked clever to whoever I'm confined with. Question five. Name the town in Norfolk that as you approach it, disappears. Now, I think maybe you could have got this if you don't know Norfolk, but yeah. As you approach the town of Dis in Norfolk, Dis appears. The answer is Dis. There is a town called Dis. I've now said Dis far too many times. It's lost all meaning. Now, rhyming journeys. I, I think this is fun, but then I've been locked inside for a week. What do I know? Okay, here's the first one. That was Alaska to Nebraska. From Alaska to Nebraska. Okay, next one. That's Japan to Milan. It's Japan to Milan, everyone. Japan to Milan. They rhyme. It's Kent to Gwent. Kent to Gwent. Tanzania to South Korea. Yeah, the rhyme's a bit trickier there. And this last one took you from Houston to Houston. Houston to Houston. <laughs> the pop star Gary Newman was born on the 8th of March, 1958. I think we all know that. Gary Newman uh, was born on the 8th of March, 1958, which ironically, makes him 13 days older than which actor? So Gary Newman um, is 13 days older, somewhat ironically, than which actor? The most successful Wimbledon singles champion of all time is Bernard Neal, who has won the singles championship at the All England Club no fewer than 37 times. In which sport?
Spectre was the seventh James Bond film with a one-word title. Name the other six. Bear in mind that sometimes they like to sort of ram two words together. Uh, okay, if you get all six, I guess you get a bonus point. It also might be an idea to watch all six back to back because, let's face it, we're not doing anything else very much. Working from home, I mean, as if. On the famous uh, Zebra Crossing Abbey Road album sleeve, which Beatle doesn't have any shoes on? So on the Abbey Road album cover, which Beatle is not wearing shoes? Before all this unpleasantness started, which day of the week were Greta Thunberg's climate strikes? Okay, so before, I don't know if you can remember, there was a time before the coronavirus, we used to go outside, we had jobs, we went to restaurants and bars. And look, back in those days, Greta Thunberg used to have a climate strike on what day of the week? And next half of the quiz today involves finding hidden links. So I'm gonna give you three clues uh, the answers all have a connection. You only have to find the connection. So you don't need to know all three. You get the connection off two of them. For example, if I asked you group who sang We Are The Champions, you would think Queen. If I said Canterbury has a famous arch what, you would say Bishop. And if I said what was Sir Lancelot's job, you would say Knight. So what connects Queen, Bishop and Knight? That's right, chess. Okay, here's the first set of clues. So this is question number six, okay? Sweden's Eurovision winner in 1974. Queen, who was not amused. Bear, who likes marmalade. So what connects those three answers? Here's the next one. Magazine with Bachelor of the Year feature. 1979 Woody Allen movie in black and white. Nickname of Mary Tudor. Here's the next set. The R of R&B. The third of the gifts brought by the wise men. A deodorant for teenagers named after a wild animal. And here's one more. Ball worth four in snooker. Army rank above captain, Cornish eco-friendly project. And a final set of clues. Name for an African area of vegetation. Spider with a web in the title of a children's book. As does clothing range. So name of an African area of vegetation, spider with a web in the title of a children's book, as does clothing range. What connects those three? Uh, question one. Pop star Gary Newman was born on the 8th of March, 1958, which ironically makes him 30 days older than which actor? Did, did you get it? Of course you got it, didn't you? Yeah, you got it. Gary Newman is 13 days older than Gary Oldman. So, so Newman is older than Oldman. It's a bit of fun, isn't it? It's just a bit of fun. What else would we be doing? Question two. I asked you, the most successful Wimbledon singles champion of all time is Bernard Neal, who has won the singles championship an impressive 37 times at the All England Club. In which sport? The answer is croquet. It's the All England Lawn Tennis and Croquet Club. Although the focus tends to be on the tennis, if we're, if we're absolutely honest. I don't think there's the money that once was in croquet. No. Question three. Spectre was the seventh James Bond film with a one word title. Name the other six. They are Goldfinger, Thunderball, Moonraker, Octopussy, Goldeneye, and Skyfall. Bonus point if you got them all. And uh, yeah, I might go and watch a Bond film. Why not? Feels like Christmas afternoon. I asked you on the famous Zebra Crossing Beatles Abbey Road album sleeve, which Beatle doesn't have any shoes on? It was of course Paul McCartney. Barefoot. I, I don't know why, but, uh, but I love him. And question five. Uh, which day of the week were Greta Thunberg's climate strikes? They were on Fridays. 
so everyone refused to go to school on Fridays. And, and if anything, they've got bigger because now no one's going to school at all, probably for the rest of the time. Now, uh, the answer to the hidden link questions. Okay, the answer to the first one was Waterloo, Victoria and Paddington. Questions on the screen. Waterloo, Victoria, Paddington. What's the connection? It was London stations. Question seven, the answers were Cosmopolitan, Manhattan, Bloody Mary. They're all cocktails is the answer I was looking for. Number eight, the answers were rhythm, myrrh and links. And the connection? No vowels. Question nine, Brown, Major, Eden. They're all British prime ministers. I'll endeavor to make this less British focused next week, promise. And 10, we wanted Savannah, Charlotte and George. It's the Queen's great grandchildren. Ah. Which member of the British equestrian team at the 1976 Montreal Olympics was excused a sex test? Ah. So which member of the British equestrian team at the 1976 Montreal Olympics was excused a sex test? It was, it was the rider, not the horse, if that's a clue. Which four other British cities appear in the names of properties on the London Monopoly board? So, four other British cities that are mentioned in the London Monopoly game. Yeah, good luck. Which World Cup winning football team wears a strip of a colour which does not appear on their national flag? That's as close to a sports question as I'm going to get. What was the last thing Mr. Creosote ate? What was the last thing Mr. Creosote ate? Which is the only London building allowed to have a thatched roof since the Great Fire of London in 1666? So thatched roofs were banned in London after the Great Fire of 1666. Yeah, fair enough. And, uh, and there's been one exception made. What is it? Next half of the quiz is all about movies. I'm gonna give you three characters from the credits of a well-known film. All you have to do is name that film. One point for each. Okay, I'm gonna start you off very gentle. So the first one is, is explaining what's going on here, okay? So Sheriff Al Chambers, Lilla Crane, Norman Bates. Name the film. And, and if you can't name the film, I, I, I mean, really? Here's your next one. Sweaty cop and massage parlor, pride victim, gluttony victim. Here's another. Archivist, Nazi supporter, monkey man. I mean, just from that, hell of a film. Archivist, Nazi supporter, monkey man. And it's a tricky one. Mia Wallace, young butch, pumpkin. That's a pretty easy one. Final set, Guard Trout, Andy Dufresne, Ellis Boyd, Red Redding. I asked you which member of the British equestrian team in 1976 Montreal Olympics was excused a sex test. It was of course, Princess Anne. So she didn't have to have the sex test because she's a princess. Although I'm not sure to what extent people are passing themselves off as a member of the opposite sex in equestrian events at the Olympics. Maybe it happens a lot. And I'm just not aware, but I know that Princess Anne didn't have to do the sex test. I'd be interested to know, write in and tell me, um, what is the sex test? What, what do they do? Do, do they look? I do, I'm inquisitive. Question two. I asked you which four other British cities appear in the names of the properties on the London Monopoly board. It was, of course, Coventry, Leicester, Oxford, Liverpool. All streets except Leicester, which is, of course, a square or Leicester if you're playing in America and getting things wrong. Question three, I asked you which World Cup winning football team wears a strip of a color which does not appear on their national flag? Italy, who play in blue for reasons, I don't know, it's the Italians, let them do their thing. Question four, I asked, what was the last thing Mr. Creosote ate? It was of course a wafer thin mint. It's from a Monty Python film, if you, if you haven't seen it, I mean, that would be an excellent use of your time. I view that as educational. If you're homeschooling your kids, make them watch The Life of Brian. Fun, theology. Question five, I asked, uh, which is the only London building allowed to have a thatched roof since the Great Fire of London in 1666? 
It is, of course, Shakespeare's Globe. It's a theatre. It's like a proper old school, like Shakespearean time theatre with a thatch roof. If you're a tourist, a lot of fun. If you're from London, you've never been. Now, movie answers. First up, Sheriff Al Chambers, Lilla Crane and Norman Bates. They're all in a film called Psycho. If you didn't get that, turn this off now and go and watch it. Okay, next up, Sweaty Cop and Massage Parlor, Pride Victim and Gluttony Victim are all in Seven. All characters in Seven, which I've not seen since it came out. I might watch later. And next up was uh, Archivist, Nazi Supporter and Monkey Man. They're all in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Of course. Mia Wallace, Young Butch and Pumpkin, all characters in Quentin Tarantino's Pulp Fiction. Finally, question 10, Gar Trout, Andy Dufresne, Ellis Boyd, Red Reddington are all in the superfluous, the Shawshank Redemption. Okay, one, an easy one to start with, uh, or is it? Uh, the state of Massachusetts takes its name from the Algonquin word meaning near the big hill. Spell Massachusetts. Yeah, 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 that's right, we're doing a spell test. <laughs> That's what things have come to. This is what passes as entertainment in the lockdown. Okay, so spell Massachusetts. Don't cheat. Spell Massachusetts. I've said it too many times now. Pretty sure I'm saying it wrong. On average, how many breaths does Usain Bolt take during a 100 meter race? So question number two today. On average, how many breaths does Usain Bolt take during a 100 meter race? Very pleasing, that one. Elected in December, Sana Marin is 34 and currently the youngest Prime Minister in the world. She's the head of a country whose five main political parties are all led by women. Which country? Just name that country. Okay. Which of these birds is the odd one out? Cuckoo, Kittywake, Swift, Chiffchaff, Curlew. So which of these birds is the odd one out? Cuckoo, Kittywake, Swift, Chiff Chaff, Curlew. Easy, which is the odd one out? It's to do with their names. Why are they called that? Every planet in our solar system is named after either a Greek or Roman god, except one. Name the planet. So every planet in our solar system is named after either a Greek or Roman god, except one. Which one? Okay, the next half of today's quiz is another set of rhyming journeys, because I like rhyming journeys. And also, I desperately like to go somewhere. Okay, so look at the map, write down the start and the end point of each journey, and remember, they rhyme. The clue is, they rhyme. It's rhyming journeys, everyone. Okay, so question six, where is this journey from? Where is it to? Question seven, remember, both places on the map rhyme. Question eight. You can press pause, I guess, if you want more time, but uh, or you can just watch it back after. It rhymes. Question nine. If you've opened up Google Maps, you're only letting yourself down. And our final rhyming journey from here to here. Okay, write it down or, or remember it. Pleasing if you get it. I asked you to spell Massachusetts. Uh, I, I, it's, mm, okay, it's M A S S A C H U S E T T S. Two S's at the start, one at the end, two T's at the end. I don't know, I don't know why. Secondly, I asked you on average how many breaths does Usain Bolt take? during a 100 meter race? What do, you, what do you think? The answer is none. He doesn't, he doesn't take any breaths during the race. He just, just runs. It's an, anaerobic, I think they call it anaerobic, when you don't take any oxygen. Any, anyway, he's, uh, it's even more impressive. Now I know he's not breathing during it. Bloody incredible. I asked you which country's five main political parties are all led uh, by women. It's, uh, it's Finland. And if you're interested, it's also the happiest country in the world. Yeah, I mean, probably not right now. Everyone's a little bit grumpy right now, but, but generally Finland, excellent place.
I asked you which bird was the odd one out. It was the swift. All the others are named after their call, and the swift is named after how fast it goes. Hmm. Five, I asked you, um, every planet in our solar system is named after either a Greek or a Roman god, except one, which one? Well, the clue is you're standing on it. It's Earth. Okay, next up we've got rhyming journeys. Six was Arizona to Barcelona. Arizona to Barcelona. Seven was the Gambia to Zambia. The Gambia to Zambia. Eight was Cheddar to Jeddah, if you got that. Congratulations, well done you. Cheddar to Jeddah. Nine was Mali to Bali. That's Mali to Bali. And 10 was Cuba to Aruba. Cuba to Aruba. <laughs> I really enjoy rhyming journeys. More, more than I maybe should, but you know, I like it. What number do you get if you multiply together all the numbers on a telephone keypad? So what number do you get if you multiply together all the numbers on a telephone keypad? Question number two for Saturday. When the Berlin Wall fell 30 years ago, there were 15 border walls around the world. I just want to know how many there are now. You can have, I don't know, five either side. I mean, you can have 10 either side if you want. I guess if you're playing it with someone else, whoever's closest wins. Question three. Which African head of state used to play for AC Milan? Which African head of state used to play for AC Milan? Question four today. What kind of creatures are Dingy Shears, The Brick, Jubilee Fanfoot, Least Carpet, Dark Spinach, Manchester Treble Bar, Scarce Vapor? Wow, it's a great list, isn't it? I mean, this question's only here because that list. In 1975, a band whose name is a palindrome had an appealing number one single whose name is also a palindrome. Name the band, name the single. Okay, I hope you did well on that multiplication question at the beginning, just because we're locked inside and uh, basically we're gonna be doing a lot of multiplication in this next bit. I'm going to ask you pairs of general knowledge questions. Both answers are numbers. All you need to do is multiply together both answers in order to get the answer. Does that make any sense? Um, it'll become clear. Okay, so it's basically multiplication. Okay, so how many problems did Jay-Z have? How many suspects are there in Cluedo? So multiply those together for the answer. Okay, how many problems does Jay-Z have? Or did Jay-Z have? I mean, does he still have problems? Maybe not. How many problems does Jay-Z have? How many suspects are there in Cluedo? Multiply together for the answer to question six. Question number seven. How many hours make up Dolly Parton's working day in her 1980 hit song? And which year will Canada, Mexico, and the USA host the World Cup? So how many hours a day does Dolly Parton work? And which year will Canada, Mexico, and the USA host the World Cup? That's presuming it doesn't get moved because it just, you know what, let's, which year will Canada, Mexico and the USA host the World Cup and how many hours a day does Dolly Parton work? Multiply the two for the answer. Question number eight. What age does Matthew Perry become in a movie where he turns into Zac Efron? And what number Downing Street does the Chancellor of the Exchequer usually live at? Multiply both together for the answer. Number nine, what percentage is the standard UK VAT, uh, when it's being charged, that is, uh, what was the zip code in Luke Perry's Fox TV series? Okay, so what's the standard rate of VAT in the UK? What was the zip code in Luke Perry's Fox TV series? Final question for today. How old is Lysol in The Sound of Music 
when Rolf sings to her, multiplied by how many of the famous five had two legs? I asked you, uh, what number do you get if you multiply together all the numbers on a telephone keypad? The answer is, of course, zero, because th there's a zero. And if you multiply anything by zero, it it's zero. Um, that, I mean, yeah, I hate me too. That's an annoying question to ask. Sorry. I asked you how many border walls there are at the time of recording in this world, um, because when the Berlin Wall came down, there were 15. There are now 70. That's right, 70 border walls. Yeah, world cheer, I don't know what to tell you. I asked you which African head of state used to play for AC Milan. It's George Weir. George Weir, current president of Liberia, often called the best footballer never to play in a World Cup. So uh, yeah, great, go Liberia. I asked what kind of creatures are Dingy Shears, The Brick, Jubilee Fanfoot, Least Carpet, Dark Spinach, Manchester Treble Bar and Scar Vaporer. D did you get it? They're all moths. I, ju I just like the list, so I threw the question. I mean, if you got it, well done. I mean, I just generally, I call them moths. I don't know why you'd sort of differentiate. They're basically, yeah, goth butterflies, I suppose would be a better term. I asked you for a band that's a palindrome uh, who had a number one that was also a palindrome. It was, of course, ABBA and SOS. ABBA, SOS, both, both palindromes. That was really quite a palindrome heavy question. Now the multiplication answers. So question six, it was 99 times six, which is 594. If you got that, well done. You really are committing to this quiz. <laughs> question seven involved the song nine to five. Uh, so for the answer, you multiplied eight by 2026, which gives you 16,208. Question eight involved the movie 17 again, so it's 17 times 11, 187. Question nine, you multiplied 90210 by 20 to get 1,804,200. Is that right? I think that's right. It's up on the screen anyway. Question 10 was a bit more straightforward. We take out Timmy the dog, because he's got four legs, multiply it by 16, we get 64. How did you get on? I really hope you did well and feel better about yourselves. Um, I'll see you tomorrow for more quiz.